The term Annex SL is often used in conjunction with management system standards such as ISO 14001 and ISO 9001. So what does Annex SL mean and how does it affect your management system? Let's take a look. Welcome to EMS Mastery, where we look at the successful strategies and tactics to master environmental management and sustainability. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Andrew Marlow. This episode looks at Annex SL and how it is used to develop management system standards such as ISO 14001 and 9001 and what it means to organisations looking to develop an integrated management system embracing more than one ISO standard. Annex SL is the biggest single change that has come to ISO management system standards in recent years. Annex SL is a high-level structure described in ISO IEC Directives Part 1, which provides direction on standards writers by setting out guidelines which include a generic structure for the requirements as well as common terms and text in management system standards. It should be noted that the Annex SL approach applies to Type A management system standards, which provide requirements, as well as Type B management system standards, which provide guidelines. More about that in the bonus section of this episode. In the past, management system standards would have similar underlying concepts and approaches, but there would be differences, particularly in the clause references, with complex correspondence tables identifying all the differences and similarities between the standards that you intended to implement. With Annex SL Appendix 2, all new management system standards will be based on the same underlying framework and older standards will be updated. This high-level structure sets out the framework for management system standards which will follow the main headings General and Introduction Scope, Normative References, Terms and Definitions Context of the Organisation, Leadership, Planning, Support, Operation, Performance Evaluation and Improvement the scope and normative references will be standard specific. So, now let's look at the high level structure for each of the individual clause requirements. Firstly, let's look at clause 3, terms and definitions. Here, Annex SL defines key terms with applicability across all management system standards. These include organisation, interested party, top management, management system, policy, objective, risk, processes, competence, documented information, performance, continual improvement, effectiveness, requirement, conformity and non-conformity, corrective action, audit, measurement and monitoring. The first requirements clause is clause 4 context of the organisation. This clause requires an understanding of the issues that can affect, either positively or negatively, the organisation and its ability to achieve its entire intended outcomes. It covers the internal and external issues, the needs and expectations of interested parties and the boundaries to determine the scope of the management system. Next comes Clause 5, Leadership, to highlight the role of top management, to provide an emphasis on the accountability of top management, such as CEOs and other most senior management, and their actions to demonstrate leadership. It covers the requirements such as establishing organisational policy, defining clear roles, responsibilities and authorities to be able to achieve 
the intended outcomes of the management system. If you're getting value from this episode, please hit the like icon. To provide planning for the management system, Clause 6, Planning, covers the organisation's planning to implement the management system and the achievement of the intended outcomes with consideration of its risks and opportunities and actions to address them. Additionally, this clause includes the need to define organisational objectives and the planning of changes. This planning is followed by Clause 7, Support, to put in place the requirements of all the necessary support to implement the plan and to operate the changes. This clause covers support in terms of resources, competency, awareness, communication and documentation. With planning and support in place, Clause 8, Operations, highlights the requirements which will vary to a greater or lesser extent due to the standard specific requirements. Here, the requirements for the organisation to deploy the planning carried out under Clause 6, covering planning, implementing and management of its processes at the operational level, including any externally provided processes. As an opportunity to check that the management system is functioning correctly, Clause 9, Performance Evaluation, covers the requirements for monitoring, measurement, analysis and evaluation of the management system and its processes, including process inputs and results, to determine the extent to which the planned activities are realised and planned results are achieved. This clause includes the familiar requirements for internal audit and management review. Finally, Clause 10, Improvement, covers the requirements for the continual improvement of the management system with specific requirements to deal with the management of non-conformities and corrective actions. Preventative actions are not specified as this is considered to be an action to be undertaken under the requirements of Clause 6 on planning. So, to summarise, an XSL, or the high-level structure, offers a more consistent structure for the popular management system standards, and this can allow a better integration of management systems using two or more ISO standards. A large number of organisations look to have a management system covering quality, environmental and occupational health and safety requirements based on ISO 9001, 14001 and 45001, with each of these ISO standards based on an XSL. This makes it easier to integrate the various requirements into one integrated management system. As a bonus, I have identified the key management system standards which fall under the Type A category, which provide requirements and have been developed using the Annex SL high-level structure approach. And it includes the most popular management system standards, such as ISO 9001 for quality management systems, ISO 14001 for environmental management systems, ISO 45001 for occupational health and safety management systems, ISO 50001 for energy management systems, and ISO IEC 27001 for information security management systems. These popular ISO standards are joined by over 30 other management systems, such as ISO 46001 for water efficiency management systems, 37301 for compliance management systems, ISO 55001 for asset management systems, ISO 20121 for event sustainability management systems and ISO 30401 for human resource management. Additionally, some Type B management system standards, which provide guidelines, have also been 
updated to the Annex SL high-level structure approach. These include ISO 14004 for management systems and ISO 9002 for quality management systems. Further information on Annex SL, the high-level structure and the management system standards mentioned in this episode are given in the description box below, including a link to the resources on the emsmastery.com website. If this episode has helped to advance your understanding of the development of management system standards to the high-level structure given in Annex SL, please leave a comment in the box below if this video has helped you. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel to ensure that you don't miss out on other episodes on environmental management and sustainability. Until then, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, you can watch other episodes by clicking on the boxes in the top and bottom right, and to subscribe to this channel, click on the link to the left. Thank you.